On April 11, 2021, the world record ice carousel was broken by the Northern Maine Ice Busters by spinning a 1,234-foot in diameter circle of ice on Long Lake in Sandigat, Maine. What propelled the carousel was a 160-horsepower engine that had been mounted on a utility trailer. With all the excitement and festivities of that day, the engine had been left on the ice to be removed at a later date. However, the rapid ice melting conditions would make the engine removal very difficult. This is April 16th, and today the removal of the engine is about to begin. The melting ice is honeycombed and only four inches thick. It is no longer safe to walk on. To remove it, two small fishing boats will attempt to break a quarter mile path from shore to the engine and drift the engine back to shore. The first boat, operated by Ken Martin, is leaving the launch and starting to cut the path to the engine. Roger Morno is now launching his boat. Both boats will try to break a path through the ice to get to the stranded engine. Ken is now leaving the boat launch and starting to cut a path through the four inch thick ice to get to the engine. This is a slow process to make sure that the ice does not damage the hull of the boat. Roger is also leaving the launch with his boat to begin breaking the ice. His progress is also slow, and sometimes the person in the front of the boat must break the ice in front of the boat. Notice how Ken is also rocking the boat from side to side, which keeps breaking the ice. There is still a long ways to go before reaching the engine. Roger is now cutting Ken's path and will start going in circles. This is to break up the ice on both sides of the path to widen the path. In order to get the engine down the path, the path must be at least 30 feet wide to accommodate the width of the trailer under the engine. Round and round, Roger is maneuvering his boat to break up the ice. You can see how the boat breaks up the ice into real small pieces. While Roger is widening the path, Ken continues to break a path to the engine. We can also see him preparing a rope that will be used to tow the stranded engine back to shore.
Ken is starting a larger circle around the engine. This will permit the boats to be much more maneuverable around the engine itself. Roger is now on his way to help Ken break up the ice around the engine. Ken is now up to the engine and inspecting it to see where he will be able to attach the tow rope. Roger then decides to get the wooden arrows that had been placed on the ice to detect movement of the ice during the carousel. The arrow was made of pieces of two by sixes that were 16 feet long and painted fluorescent orange so that they could be seen from great distances. Slowly, the wood is removed from the ice and loaded crosswise at the back of the boat. Ken is now attaching a rope from his boat to the floating engine. As you can see, the engine is mounted on a small utility trailer with blue 55 gallon plastic drums attached underneath it. This is to keep the trailer floating. Ken is now testing to see if he can tow the heavy engine. A second option had been considered to remove the engine. That is, float it down the original perimeter of the carousel. Roger is now going down the original perimeter all the way to shore. However, this would make for a longer route to get the engine to shore. It would also require that the path be widened and the moving ice was constantly closing the perimeter. The idea of using the original carousel perimeter was abandoned. Roger returned to the engine and would continue the original plan of floating the engine down a direct path to the boat launch. After explaining to Ken that the perimeter route was not the way to go, Roger and Ken would continue breaking up the ice down the path they had made earlier. Ken continues to widen the area around the engine while Roger widens the path. However, the pieces of 2x6s in back of Roger's boat make the boat less maneuverable and Roger is bringing the wood back to the boat launch. Notice the long spikes that had been driven into the wood to hold them securely on the ice. As they approach the boat launch, other people are there to help him unload the wood.
With the wood unloaded, Roger returns to widening the path. Ken is also joining Roger in widening the path. As you can see, the path is getting pretty wide, but it is still full of broken ice. The pieces are small enough that they will not puncture the plastic barrels that are keeping the engine floating. Ken continues to break up the ice along the path, which is now getting close to being wide enough to consider trying to float the engine down the path. Although the ice is being broken, the two boats are equipped with some pretty powerful outboard motors. Roger's boat has a 40 horsepower motor, while Ken's boat is powered by a 90 horsepower motor. Roger is wanting to test the thickness of the ice and tries to step onto the ice. He quickly learns that the ice is not safe. Both boats continue to circle the engine to make sure that the ice is completely broken up. Back on shore, a payloader from the town of St. Agatha has been brought in to help lift the engine once it's brought back to shore. And then, what appears on the boat launch is Roger's ace in the hole. It appears to be an oversized side by side. But look at the size of those tires. It is not only driving into the lake, but look at those tires break up the ice. Now the water is quite deep, and it is obvious that whatever this is, it floats. Roger comes over to greet the machine and gives it instructions. Off goes the machine towards the stranded engine, leaving in its wake a large path of broken ice. This machine will be a tremendous help to Roger and Ken's boats. The machine is already near the engine. Roger and Ken continue to break up the ice with the boats. The machine is also chewing the area around the engine. Look at those tires go! Ken has tied a rope to the engine trailer and is starting to turn the engine towards the direction of the shore. The machine, as well as Roger's boat, are breaking the ice into smaller pieces ahead of Ken. The machine has returned to the engine and Ken is reviewing the plan for towing with the operator. The machine is turning around and breaking up the remaining ice 
Ahead of Ken. Roger is preparing a second tow rope for Ken. They are making sure that when Ken starts to tow the engine, that the engine is well secured to Ken's boat. And now the tow is about to begin. The machine is making the final pass before Ken starts to tow. We can see the operator controlling the machine. Look at those huge tires on the machine and how they just eat the ice. Ken has now started to tow the engine. It will be a slow process. Although the ice is broken in pieces, there are still some very sharp edges. The machine turns around and goes back towards the engine, widening the path even more. You can see that the engine is getting closer to shore. Roger's boat and the machine continue to chew up the ice. This is Roger and his boat crew, all having smiles about the progress of the machine, but also knowing that the engine will be off the ice very soon. The machine is right next to the engine, continuing to break the ice. Ken is slowly towing the engine down the path and heading for shore. While all the ice was being broken around the engine, the solid ice has moved to the boat launch. The machine has come very close to shore and is breaking up the ice in front of the boat launch. In the background, you can see that Ken is also getting close to shore. Round and round, the machine is making ice cubes out of once solid ice. There is a lot of excitement knowing that the engine will soon be off the ice. Because of the shallow water, Ken is almost as close to shore as he can get with his boat. He is now detaching the rope from his boat and giving it to the operator of the machine. Now it is the machine's turn to finish towing the engine to shore. Because the wheels of the machine are not yet touching the shore, the towing progress is slow. But that is all about to change as the machine's wheels are now touching the shore. The wheels are grabbing into something solid. The engine launches forward. Ken 
ties his boat to the dock. All the attention will now be given to getting the engine to shore. The tow rope is then adjusted to the back of the machine, which will now easily finish pulling the engine to shore. The engine is back on shore. The tow rope is now detached. Notice the plastic drums have held up well as flotations. The loader is then brought in to finish getting the engine on shore. The engine is mounted on the trailer and the trailer stand must be raised to get it onto the boat ramp. A chain is attached to the trailer and the loader lifts the front part of the trailer while slowly backing up. Congratulations! The engine and trailer are off the lake. Now to remove the plastic drums which successfully served as flotations to the engine. The trailer is now lowered and all the wheels are on dry ground after being suspended on the lake for almost a week. We can see how cleverly the plastic drums were attached to the trailer. Now that the plastic drums and the telephone poles that held them to the trailer have been removed, the trailer is now ready to be brought back to Roger's home. Thank you to all the volunteers and the town of St. Agatha for all the assistance in getting the engine that propelled the world record breaking carousel off the ice. This was an experience that few will ever forget. Roger's pickup is brought in and hooks on to the trailer. As it drives away, plans are already being made for next year's even larger ice carousel. <laughs>